Hey, what's going on, guys? Alex with Born to Compete. You see, we got one team one one behind us, eleven alive. Always remember, you can catch the Friday night highlights with Jeff Hollinger and the crew on the ATL and Friday on NBC, eleven alive at eleven fifteen. I don't know if you see this guy right here. I got the man beside me, my good friend Frank Ski. Hey, Frank, what, what, what's up, man? I'm good. Where you been, buddy? I've been in D.C. hanging out with Barack Obama for a couple years, but I'm back home. Well, first off, we're all glad to see you. We all know that even though you have been gone, you've still been doing a youth bowl religiously and it still almost has like a, I hate to say it, but like a cult-like following. I mean, that's just the reality of it. So you tell me, in your own words, what's going to go on with the Frank Ski Bowl this year? Well, we're going to do it again just like we do every year. Last year we did it and it was the biggest year ever. This year is going to be even bigger because now, like every kid that plays youth football, their dream is to win the Frank Ski Bowl. Yeah. Not even to win the high school championships. Yeah. That's after the fact. Yeah. Like, you got to get through the youth bowl right. first. And we're going to make it bigger than ever because we're teaming up with Born to Compete this year. Do you know what else? Absolutely, man. Come on. We get TV time. <laughs> well, I know we're excited about it. I, listen, do you want to give them, do you want to tell them what's going to happen? Because because it's new rules this year, new format this year. It's going to be bigger than ever. So you go ahead and tell the people what's about to happen. So usually what we do every year is we wind up picking four teams from the Atlanta metro region that play for the youth bowl. So there's a lot of teams that get really disappointed. There's a lot of teams that, you know, feel like, oh, we, we just missed it. So we decided this year to team up with you guys and we're going to create a tournament. We're going to start with eight teams this year and play down to one, to one championship. So you telling me all these years we've heard complaints, oh Frank, you only taking four and Frank you left my baby out and Frank you ain't right, Frank. You're not right. Yeah, but so this year we're changing it. Eight teams. It's gonna get down to four teams. Then it's gonna get down to one team. And there will be one champion, one crown winner, the best of the best for the Frank Ski Bowl Championship. You know, this is better than the BCS. You know, the BCS they give you four, we give you eight. Okay, we're going in with eight teams this year. So it's going to be crazy. So what will happen is actually there is a chance that a team that did not make the top four, maybe a team out in the county somewhere that doesn't get attention, or a team that was in the league so competitive that they lost by one point like the team did last year and they didn't get in, that team may have a chance to redeem themselves. It's just like being in the BCS and having one loss and then winning it all to a team that had no losses. You can do it this year in the Frank Ski Bowl. So we're also, I, I think we should add on one more thing there that everybody doesn't know about. Yeah. So usually every year with the six through 11, we kind of take that ourselves and you know, we, we, we let the kids have a good time and all that. So you want to tell them what else we're going to do? So what we're going to do everybody on Championship Sunday of the Youth Bowl this year, we are going to have every age category play their championship and then the last game will be the youth bowl for the 12 and under. So grandmama, when you worried about little Pookie that runs that ball at six years old that nobody can catch because that's your baby, he going to be in the spotlight this year. And even the kids that are 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, they're all going to get a chance to play on Youth Bowl Sunday. But the big game for the money will be that 12 and under game, Youth Bowl Sunday night. I love it. You guys, you hear it right here and then born to compete. We're going to do something special. We're not going to tell them just yet. We're going to do something special for the, uh, the the younger age groups, but obviously the focus is the 12 and under. I'm excited. Is there anything else you want to say to the people in the Atlanta metro area? That's it, man. We've been missing you, man. Yeah, you know what? Um, I'll be back on the air soon. I can't tell you where and on television soon. I can't tell you where. But what I can tell you is I will be at the cheerleading competition for born to compete because that's our next goal. How go. about that? There you go. Well, listen. It started years ago. He brought us in, born to compete. You know we started with Frank Ski. Now we're here, 11 Alive. And, he, and of course, he's going to be somewhere. He can't tell you right now. I think I might know. He can't tell you, though. So we're going to find out. Frank, man, we love you. Thank you, man. We're glad, we're glad to have you back. You. Take care, guys. We're out. Give me two. Give me three. Cover me up. Question to ask. Anybody ready to go walk with me? Yes, sir. Anybody ready to go walk with me? Yes, sir. Ah! War time. War time. You gonna make your name today? You understand? Yes, sir. Four o'clock. Two back. How you feel? Uh, How you feel? Uh, yeah.
watching Born to Compete, the number one youth sports show. I'm Ashley Barnett here with Alex. We're going to talk about Glenwood versus Knoxville 11U. Terrence Reed is one of the best kept secrets in the nation. What do you think of that game tonight? You know, I'll tell you what, Terrence Reed has the ability to be special. I'm not talking about regular special. Listen, he has everything you want. He has speed, he has vision. He can catch the ball out the backfield, and he's a big back, so he might translate into a receiver as he continues to get older. You know, who knows? Who knows? Because, you know, you get too tall for that position. But I'm surprised we haven't watched him as much as we should have, but I'm just glad we had the opportunity to watch him. And here we have the Georgia versus Tennessee Classic, uh, powered by Body Armor, the uh, sports drink by Kobe Bryant. So it, it was a great day. It was a great day. And listen, guys, you can see the highlights. This kid is absolutely fantastic. And here are your Glenwood versus Knoxville highlights. Glenwood Panthers taking on Knoxville Falcons in the Lebanon division. And if you don't know about this young man, you need to find out. And that is Terrence Reed, one of the best players in the country in the Lebanon division. And you see right there, you, you can see why he is an absolute animal. But watch number one. Number one for the Knoxville Falcons, a fantastic quarterback, getting the ball downfield, getting inside the 10-yard line. Then here, watch this run. Boom, right there, tough run. Gets into the end zone, and the Knoxville Falcons would take the lead over Glenwood. This would be a good game going back and forth. And as you see, the quarterback from Knoxville Falcons came to play ball as he had four touchdown passes in the game to help lead his team. Then here on fourth down, trying to extend their lead. Number one gets outside, but number 10 is there to make the tackle show on one time to B2C Flex. That's a good way to get yourself on camera right there. Good job by him. Now on fourth down, fakes the punt. You're not gonna even believe this right here. Gives him a stiff arm, leaps over another 96 yard touchdown run by number one from Glenwood again we are telling you he is one of the best players in the country at that age group the kid is absolutely phenomenal would give Glenwood the lead 21 to 19 but I told you number one from Knoxville came to play and as he, he gets the touchdown right there giving them the lead again but again what is Glenwood gonna do I'll tell you what just give him the ball give him the ball and get out the way stiff arms one Cuts back across the grain, and it's all speed right here. That's all speed, man. That, that Look, you just wake up like that. Either you got it or you don't. Great job by number one. Gets into the end zone, and here goes number 11 later on in the game from Glenwood. Big-time touchdown run by him, and Glenwood is up by a touchdown and two points. But Knoxville Falcons, we told you, there is no quit in them. This was a barn burner, a shootout, old fashioned. <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it. Either way, both teams putting all their effort on the field offensively as number one gets to the end zone and then here trying to get the onside kick. They do not get it. Glenwood would recover and Glenwood would go on to win the game against Knoxville 34-31. Hey man, we came out here and we played smash mouth football, man. Yeah. Glenwood! Tucker and Knoxville 9U squared off. Tucker is the number one team in the country, and they also have the number one player, Traylon Maddox. What do you think of that matchup? Hey, man, Knoxville said they drove about four hours down I-75, bathroom breaks, uh, all kind of food stops, everything like that, so they didn't come down here to lay down. I'll tell you that right now, just because Tucker is the number one team in the country and Traylon Maddox is the best player out there right now, Knoxville came to play. They competed for four quarters and they gave everything they had, man. So listen, the highlights are going to be fantastic. And here are your Tucker Knoxville highlights. Get your popcorn ready. Number one team in the country. Tucker Lions with probably the number one player in the country taking on the Knoxville Falcons. And this is exactly what you expect him to do. Number one starts off the highlights. Big time touchdown run 60 yards into the end zone and the number one team in the country would lead. But I tell you what, Knoxville said they didn't ride down I-75 four hours, make about five bathroom stops to come down here and lay down as number seven gets around the left side, gets into the end zone, and we have a ball game as the score is tied seven to seven. Tucker taking on Knoxville. 
Then here, look at Knoxville's defense. I'm telling you what, number seven played like an absolute man out there as he had a good game. Then number five, Knoxville rolling to his right, trying to make something happen. But number eight steps in front of the pass, giving the interception for Tucker. Now we know number one gets a lot of attention, and he should. But it is a fumble, and Knoxville would have the ball again, looking to score. They here looking back, are dropping back, going back to pass, and uh oh, looks like the number one team in the country is in trouble, as Knoxville's in good field position. On the next play though, it's a fumble. Tucker picks the ball up. They have the ball. Now, like again, like we said earlier, we know number one is a baller, but let's not forget about number three, who was the player of the year last year. And you see good run by him getting good field position for Tucker. Then here on third down, another good, tough run. Malcolm McClain gets down around the 20 yard line. Then here they go to number one. Oh, look at the cut. That's the way. Put your foot in the ground. 20 yards into the end zone, and Tucker would have the lead. Knoxville trying to make something happen. Number 24 gets in the backfield, causes the fumble. Tucker would have the ball, looking to score again. Then here, trying to make something happen again. Number three, great block, clears it out for number one, gets to the end zone, and Tucker would beat Knoxville. Hey, first of all, I want to shout out to the coach of the Falcons and that team, that is one scrappy team. Very good sound, disciplined tackling. Um, I can't say we've seen that type of team in a, in a minute, in a minute, in a minute, we've seen them. But um, hey, these Tucker Lions right here, they show why they the best in the country. And everybody out there that see this right now, look out for these boys right here. Well, you talk about level, so I'll say this. At the end of last year, when uh, we finished B2C Championship as number one, I went on my hashtag and I put 2015, we raising the ball. So if you are on our level, step to it. Born to the beat, ah! Number one, New Rock, ranked number five in the country, taking on the number two ranked Atlanta Vikings in the state of Georgia. And you see the Atlanta Vikings said they have come to play ball, trying to ruin New Rock's homecoming. But here on fourth down, number 17 gets into the backfield, making a tackle, giving New Rock the ball. Then just watch this run here. Man, I don't even know what to say. Somebody tried try to tackle him. He flipped up over top of their head. Then watch, oh, oh. <laughs> then, then good fake right there. Good run by New Rock from number or good rock by number one from New Rock. Then number seven going around the right side. Fakes out of a couple people. Fakes out of a couple tackles. I'm still I'm still caught up on that run by number one. But either way, gets into the end zone. It is a penalty on the play, though. It would be coming back. So what did they say? If it works one time and it's not broke, don't try to fix it. Just go right back to him. And they go back to number seven. Big time touchdown run. Gets to the end zone and New Rock would lead. Then later in the game, listen, they got some speed out there and they block great downfield. They give it number three. He gets into the end zone. They would extend the lead 12 to zero. On the following kickoff, Atlanta Vikings picks up the ball and this young man, number two, had a phenomenal game. As you see, he returns the kickoff into the end zone, helping them get back in the game. But then here on third down, New Rock needing to get a first down. They get it, and New Rock would beat the Atlanta Vikings 12 to 6. It was a hard fought game. I want to give uh, a lot of respect to the Atlanta Vikings for coming out and playing us today. One of the toughest uh, competition we've had today. And I, hey, D Boys, they just keep coming back, keep coming back. Hey, I'm glad to be part of their life. Boys, you can be Still in the B2C Georgia versus Tennessee Classic. Tucker taking on Knoxville in the 7 division. Number one gets the ball going around the left side, gets into the end zone, and Tucker would have the lead. Then here later in the game, big running back. He's up for B2C Offensive Player of the Year in that age group. Watch him stay in bounds. That's some good running right there. Gets down near the 30-yard line for Tucker. Then later in the drive, going with the reverse, give it to number four. He gets outside. Gets into the end zone and Tucker would beat the Knoxville Falcons.
Tonight, we also had the North Atlanta Giants and the Shoals Creek Eagles square off. The Giants are coached by Super Bowl winning Brandon Jacobs. How was that? You know, I get a, I have a smile on my face when I talk about Brandon Jacobs because you're looking at somebody that played in the league and that has dedicated himself to coaching the youth. You know, I mean, you don't get that a lot. He's, he's there every practice. He makes as many games as he possibly can. So this time they came out looking like an old school Glenwood team. They had the mask on. They came out to the fireworks and the whole nine. So they were prepared to play. And he has changed the environment, the thinking up there in North Atlanta that you have to play a physical brand of football to be successful. So North Atlanta Giants are a team to look out for in the 8-9 division. And check out their highlights right here. And that is the way to make an entrance. Reminds me of the old Glenwood days there. Coach Brandon Jacobs leading his North Atlanta Giants out to the field to play ball. And number 35 opens up the highlights. Big time run by him, 60 yards. North Atlanta Giants are up. Then here, watch this kid here. One of the more underrated players at the 8 under division. Played wreck last year. Now he's playing travel. Uh, with the North Atlanta Giants, and you see he has developed as a player into one of the best players in the state of Georgia. Big time touchdown run by him. But then Shoals Creek, let me tell you something. They got some speed, and look at number four. Find the, find the hole, and all he sees is turf in front of him. 60 yards later, in the end zone, Shoals Creek trying to cut into the lead. But it will be all North Atlanta at the end of the day as, as they will go on to defeat Shoals Creek. Um. I'm gonna give credit to my players, man, first, and, uh, and my coaches. We come out, work hard every week, three days a week. You know, the, the kids are putting it in. I got committed parents, you know, so we just come out and work right here on this field. We come out, work, 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 work. We put a lot of pressure upon these guys, and they respond. So, you know, I love these boys. I love these boys with every piece of me, and I love the time I get, to, you know, to come out here and spend with them. You know, but I just, I just got to give most of the credit to my coaches. I know a lot about football, but those guys know a little bit more than me about this youth stuff, so I give them all the credit. Georgia Thoroughbreds taking on North Atlanta Saints. Georgia Thoroughbreds ranked number five. North Atlanta Saints ranked number six. Score 8-2-6. And big time interception by the Georgia Thoroughbreds right there. Then Georgia Thoroughbreds with the ball. Tries to go deep, but good hit by number 34 from the North Atlanta Saints, knocking the ball loose. Then George Thoroughbred trying to get something going. But it is a quarterback sack by number 43 getting the tackle in the backfield. But at the end of the day, it will be all George Thoroughbred. You see him going deep there as George Thoroughbred will go on to beat the North Atlanta Saints. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank the Saints for inviting us out. Nice facilities, nice team. Mm -hmm. They did some things that we were, uh, it was our first time playing a cover two, mm -hmm. being able to uh, battle the receiver over top and watch the crossing routes and the double plays. So, it was a game that I think the boys learned from, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters, just trying to get them ready for the next level. So great group of guys, great team. I uh, wish them the best of luck. We're trying to move on to our last game next week and getting ready for the playoff. Born to the beat back up! Ah! Seven under division, Knoxville taking on Central to Cab, Georgia versus Tennessee battle. And good run by number three from Central to Cab. Then here they go to number six. Gets outside, gets near the 20 yard line, trying to give Central to Cab good position. But then here on fourth down, Knoxville defense needing to stand up. And that's what they do as the big D lineman gets back there, makes a big play, and Knoxville will have the ball. Then here, watch this run by number three. You know, I think this is the second time I have seen 11 people fake out. Either way, good run by number three from Knoxville. He gets into the end zone and they would lead six to zero. Then in the fourth quarter, Central the Cab trying to come back, gives the ball to number 10, makes a good cut there, gets up the field and gets the ball down near the 30 yard line. Then on fourth down on the goal line, they call the quarterback's number, gets into the end zone and the, the game is tied six to six, Central the Cab and Knoxville. So here it comes down to the all too important extra point. Number four goes around the right corner, gets into the end zone, and Central the Cab would win seven to six. So we just came came out today and tried to execute, tried to get back on the right page so we can make a run for the playoffs.
So Alex, what was your favorite part about tonight's show? Uh, besides the chinchilla jacket you got on, <laughs> listen man, there's a lot of great competition. Obviously you saw Frank Ski come through, make that huge announcement about the Youth Bowl, about what we're doing. The All-Star Game is going on, get your nominations in. We also are going to be doing a combine for that, so I'm really excited about that. And so there's a lot of things going on with Born to Compete right now, and it's great for youth sports. As far as football goes, North Atlanta Giants are for real. Tucker Lions, they got pushed, but they showed that they're champions, so they're for real. And then Glenwood's Terrence Reed. Listen, man, hey, the boy's a baller. He's a baller, and he deserves his chance in the sunlight. And that's exactly what happened today. So I, I enjoyed the show. What about you? I think it was pretty good myself. <laughs> well, I hope you guys liked it, too. Thanks for watching Born to Compete, the number one youth sports show in America.